Welcome to our new hydro dipping video series called Just the Tip. In this video series, we're going to cut out all the boring stuff, give you guys just awesome tips and tricks on how you can become a better at-home DIY hydro dipper. Or if it's something that you've never done before and you're interested in, maybe we'll be able to teach you something. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the number one mistake that I see new hydro dippers make. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to show you a little demonstration and stick around and show you how to fix it. Today's video is brought to you in part by One Hit Wonder Paint Company. We call it OHW for short. OHW carries a full range of paints and accessories for the hydrographic industry. Their paints provide superior adhesion to all substrates, including plastic, metal, wood, glass, bone, and much, much more. And the best part is there's no primer needed, ever. And it's the paint we use right here in the ATF Hydrographic Shop. One Hit Wonder has packaged together an awesome, high-quality do-it-yourself dip kit that will get you started dipping right now in your own home. If you'd like to get your hands on one of their hydro dipping kits, make sure you stick around all the way to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how you can get your hands on one with a discount. If you've been around the channel for a while, you'll probably see some new stuff going on here in the shop. I did some redecorating so I could get some better camera angles. Also, if you'll remember a couple of months back, we went from doing videos every week till we backed it off to like every other week. And that was in preparation for this video series. You're welcome. So how the video schedule is going to go from here on out is on one week, we're going to do our normal hydrographics projects videos like we always do. And then the following week, we'll have a just the tip video. So the number one mistake that I see new hydro dippers making deals with this stuff, activator. And out of all the questions that we get constantly, it's usually about activation. How much is too much? How much is too little? How do you put just the perfect amount on? So before I teach you the wrong way to do this and the correct way to do this, there's something that you need to understand first. So there are two terms used in the hydro dipping industry that you need to know to understand how to activate correctly. The first one is under activation, which means that you didn't put enough activator on the film. The other is over activation, which means you put too much activator on the film. In just a second, I'm going to take you over to the hydro dipping tank. I'm going to show you what under activation looks like. I'm going to show you what over activation looks like, and I'm going to show you what perfect activation looks like. But there is one other thing that you must remember. There are no hard and fast black and white 100% always rules when it comes to activation. And here's why. Every film is different. Every single film likes a different amount of activator and there's just no way for us to print you out a list and go, this one needs X amount of activator and this one needs X amount of activator because everybody activates differently. You may move faster than someone else. You may move a little slower than someone else. So it's going to vary depending on what film you use and how you apply your activator. With that being said, the only way you will ever learn is to follow these simple steps that I'm going to show you and you have to practice. Unfortunately, this is just one of those hobbies that if you get into, and even if you go into the profession, I still have to do this. You guys see me do speed shapes in my videos all the time. We have to dip a sample just so I can make sure that we have the activation correct before I start dipping customers' parts. So we're here at the dip tank. I'm going to show you this process, how you can figure out what's under, what's over, and what's perfect activator. I've got some speed shapes here. These are just little pieces of plastic. You can buy these online. If you don't have to use speed shapes, you can use like light switch covers or a scrap piece of wood, whatever you want, whatever's cheap and you have laying around to do this. These are just little tests to show you the difference between under, over, and perfect activation. But all I've done with these speed shapes is I just cleaned them real quick and then I sprayed them with OHW Super Bright Orange because it's a really bright color and it'll help you see what I'm talking about today. And for film, we're gonna be using just generic Tiger Stripe today. This is just a straight black ink film. It has no color in it except for black for the Tiger Stripes. Some films are a little bit harder to tell because of all the colors in them, but this being just mostly black, it'll be really easy for you to see. So what you'll see me doing here is taking three separate pieces of film. They're all cut about the same size. I'm gonna lay them down in the water, let them soak for about 60 to 90 seconds to get fully hydrated. And then I'm gonna take you through the process of showing you what is under activated, what's over activated, and how to figure out where the perfect line is in between. So I'm gonna be using this ink drink aerosol activator today. Normally I use a spray gun, an HVLP spray gun. We're gonna cover that in another video. I know most of you guys at home are gonna be using aerosol cans just like this. So that's what I'm gonna show you on today. So for this very first one, I'm going to under activate it. I'm not going to put enough activator on it. Anytime you activate, make sure that you shake your can really, really well. You want to be about 12 to 18 inches above the pattern and move from left to right. Normally your speed is going to be about one foot per second. So I've got about 12 inches of film cut right here. So we're going to move one 1000 and that should be about the correct speed. Now we just gotta figure out how much activator we need to put on it. So we'll go ahead and start with this first one. Once I spray it, I'm gonna let the activator sit on the film 
for about 20 seconds. I have a timer set so that all these are exactly the same. I'm gonna spray this, let it sit for 20 seconds, we'll dip it, and then we'll go to the next one. All right, so we are at 20 seconds. All right, so on this next one, I'm going to show you what over-activation looks like. I'm going to put way too much activator on this, and then when we get done, we'll look at the results here in just a minute. All right, so there's our dip for that one. Now for this next one, I'm going to show you the correct amount of activator to put on, moving at that same speed. So now I've got all the speed shapes that we just did. This is the under, this is the over, and this is the one that is correct. I'm gonna rinse these off for about three to five minutes, and then we'll look at the results. You can do this at home in your kitchen sink with just a little spray nozzle. All you need is just some water that's not hotter than what you dipped in. We've got this big rinse tank. It just makes our life easier. We're not focusing on all this other stuff today. We're just talking about under and over activation. So I'm gonna rinse these, and then we'll look at the results. So after rinsing, here is our speed shapes. We'll take a look at them real quick. This one is the one that we activated correctly. As you can see, it's still a little wet, but no biggie. Everything on it looks the way that it's supposed to. So let's take a look at the one that is under activated. It's got a couple of things going on that I want you to look at very closely and remember so that you can tell when something is under activated. The very first telltale sign is you see how right in here, right in here, right in here, there was supposed to be a stripe. There's not because it was under activated in those areas. As you can see, when I was trying to get the activator working, it was kind of going in spurts. I did that on purpose so that you could see that if that ever happens to you, you might miss a small section and under activate it. And that stripe didn't even stick. When I pulled this up out of the water, the stripe just fell right off of it. The other thing to note is you see these little teeny tiny pinholes that are all in the blacks. And if you look really close, you can tell that none of these pinholes are completely smooth all the way around. They're really, really jagged. You can see all up in here, these holes and little areas have jagged edges all the way around. They're just kind of like all over the place. This is a classic sign of under activation. This is the most common thing you will see if you under activate. You will see these jagged little holes all over the place. This means you did not put enough activator on. So there's two things to remember when under activation. You'll have parts that just don't activate at all and they'll fall off because they didn't get activated or you'll have these areas of really, really jagged holes. Now for over activation, you'll see that this also has some holes in it, but you'll see they're almost perfectly round or they have really no jagged edge to them. This is a classic sign of over activation. The other thing that you'll see is the paint will kind of get sticky. Like I can really press on this and actually leave my fingerprint in the paint. That is another classic sign of overactivation. So the two things to remember with overactivation is your holes are going to be smooth or you might have a bigger blob like right here. I'll show you in another one in just a second. But like on this one, all the holes have smooth edges. So if it's smooth, it's overactivated. You put too much activator on it. And if it has jagged holes like on this one, it's underactivated. You didn't put enough activator on it. Now let's look at just a couple more examples real quick. This is one extra speed shape that I had that I painted orange. And believe it or not, I actually did dip this. This is way overactivated. This is extremely overactivated. Now I did this on purpose because I have seen a lot of people do this. They think they're putting enough activator on and it winds up being too much. What'll happen is when you go to dip, the pattern will literally just slide right off the paint. It won't stick at all. But even worse, the paint becomes so sticky that you can literally just move it off of the part with your hand. You see how I'm just moving my finger across it and it is messing up the paint? That This paint is like super, super sticky because it is way overactivated. So I know this is an exaggerated example, but this is something that you may see and I want you guys to see this. If your pattern just runs off of the speed shape or whatever it is that you're dipping, you are way overactivated. Also, if you get this sticky paint 
where you can literally just move the paint off of the part with your finger, you're way over activated. Now here is another example. This is an older speed shape that I have of under activation. You, know, you see this has got some pretty big spots in it right here. And you notice how all the edges are jagged. This is all signs of under activation. Now this one's got a couple of things going on. This is a very mild form of over activation over here where we put too much activator on it because this pattern is actually really, really dark black through here. But as you can see, it started to fade all the blacks in these inks out and it, it kind of gives it an antique look. Well, some people may like that. This is not the correct way to apply activator for this pattern. Also, if you look over here on this side of the speed shape, this is something that you may see in over activation where you have a spot that may have dripped too much activator on it and how see how the pattern just kind of fell off in that little area and the edge all around is nice and smooth. That is a sign of over activation or that you're dripping activator onto the film while you're spraying. And on this last one, I'll show you, there's a couple of signs of over activation on these. You see how right here on this tree bark, it looks like it just kind of melted. It didn't really fall off of the speed shape. It just kind of gives it this weird melty look. That is over activation. That is too much activator. Now, when you get some samples like this and you've got some under activated ones, you've got some over activated ones. What I want you to do is do exactly what I do. Take them, let them dry and write on the back of them what you did wrong so that you can use these for reference in the future. So like on this one, I overactivated. So anytime I need to see if I forget what's overactivated, what does it look like? All I got to do is pull out the speed shape, look on the back right there. It says overactivated. Same thing on this one, overactivated. And then on this one, it says underactivated. Keep these off to the side. These are actually really, really old. I've had these for years. I keep them here in the shop just so that if I ever need to show anybody or if I forget myself what they look like, you can come back to these and have them for reference. And now you've got this video, you can also see it anytime you want right here on YouTube. So not being able to read your activator and figure out what activation issues you're having is the number one mistake I see people make. It is very important that you understand the difference between under activation and over activation so that when you go to dip something and you're doing your practice runs at home, you'll be able to figure out if you're putting too little or too much and you can figure out where that sweet spot is in between. Now we're going to dive more into this subject of activation, different methods. I'm going to show you different ways you can apply it. We're going to go really, really in depth in this topic in future videos. There's a lot that goes into it. I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet and just get to the point. So my main goal for this particular video is to show you the guys the difference and get you to learn and get it burned into your brain what under and over activation looks like so that we can build on your activation skills in future videos. So if you would like to get your hands on some of the cool one hit wonder products that we use in today's video i've got a link down in the description box below where you can check them out they even have a really awesome pre-packaged hydro dipping kit that comes with everything that you need to start your very first hydro dipping project right at home and if you like saving money which who doesn't because that's crazy i've got a coupon code for you you need to do is use the link down in the description and type in that coupon code and you will be on your way to saving some money. If you learned something, make sure that you go down there, smash that thumbs up button. We appreciate every single like that we get. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you hit that bell notification icon so that you'll get notified every week when we post a new video. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below. I will try to get to as many of them as I can. Thanks again to everyone for watching. Let's roll the bloopers. Activator. I totally have this backwards. I need to turn this around so you can see what it is. Oh my God. Demonstrate to you how you can tell between un, uh, un, uh, talking to you about the number one, that's two, what? Number one, this is number two. A lot in the world of, uh, where was I going with this? This is your first time on the channel. Make sure that you go below and smash that thumb that thumbs up button. It's a little early for the thumbs up button. You haven't even seen anything yet. Already painted with OHW super bright. I, that's definitely orange. I don't know why I couldn't. I was like literally holding it and I could not think of the word orange in my brain for some reason. Wow. Your dipping world that comes to deal with the. Uh, where was I going with this? I keep losing my brain. I shouldn't film these videos so late at night. New hydrographic, hydrograph, hyd, hydrographics people, hydro, hydrographics persons, pe people, I, 